So once again, spanning tree chooses the root of the spanning tree topology, which is H2. It then chooses the root ports of the switches, H3 port 1, router TRK2, H1 TRK1. It then chooses designated ports, and here they are. So designated port on the link between H2 and H3 is port 2 on H2. Between the router and H2 would be ports 1 and 3, in other words TRK1 on H2. Between H1 and the router would be ports A2, A4, in other words TRK1 on the router. Between H1 and H3, port 2 on H3. We should also not forget about the ports connected to the PCs. So on edge 1, this is the port that this PC uses to get to the root bridge. So this is the designated port. On this segment, this is the designated port. On this segment, this is the designated port. And on this segment, this is the designated port. From our router's point of view, to get to the root bridge, it needs to send traffic this way. So once we've chosen designated ports, the last step is to block all remaining ports. So looking at the HP topology, the only port that needs to be blocked to stop a loop is port 23 on edge 1, and thus that port is blocked. Therefore there are no loops in this topology. Spanning tree has blocked all loops, and this topology is now loop free. Spanning tree has accomplished what it set out to do, which is to stop loops in the topology. Are we able to ping the devices in our topology? So let's test from our local PC. So ping 10, 0, 10, 250. You can see the ping is successful. 20, 251. So we're able to ping PC3. What about PC1? Pings are successful. So our PC can ping all the devices in the topology. I'm going to set up a continuous ping to 10, 0, 10, 250. So in other words, our PC here is pinging this PC. And let's see what happens when we shut this port down. What happens to the topology if we shut these ports down to mimic a cable issue? Will we still be able to ping this PC? Now before I shut the link down. Let me warn you, this is something that catches a lot of people. Just because you have connectivity to PC2 doesn't mean that your infrastructure is correctly set up. Now we added this link between edge 1 and edge 3, but what we haven't done thus far is configure the link with tagged and untagged VLANs. We haven't allowed all VLANs across this port. So before we go any further, let's configure the link between edge 1 and edge 3 with the correct VLANs so that we're sure that when the link goes down between edge 1 and the router, the network will still continue as expected. So telnetting to edge 1, typing the command show run, you can see that VLAN 1 is untagged on port 2, 4 to 23, 25 to 28, and TRK1. So in other words, VLAN 1 is untagged on this link to the router. It's untagged on port 23, which is correct. But notice here, VLAN 10 is untagged on port 24, which is correct. It's tagged on TRK1, but it's not tagged on port 23. So we have to enable that. So tagged 23. We have to allow VLAN 10 across port 23. So type show run. You can see that VLAN 10 is untagged on port 24, tagged on 23, and tagged on TRK1. We could also use the command show VLAN 10. And once again, you can see that it's tagged on 23, untagged on 24, and tagged on TRK1. So that looks right. So let's save the config. Next, let's have a look at edge 3. 
So on H3, I'll type show run. You can see that VLAN 10 is untagged in port 2 and tagged on 1. Once again, show VLAN 10 shows me that information. Now port 2 should not be untagged for VLAN 10. We configured that in a previous lab when we moved PC2 from edge 1 to edge 3. So let's fix that. So VLAN 1, untagged, 2, VLAN 10, tagged, 2. So if we type show VLAN 1, you can see that it's untagged on port 1 and port 2, which is correct. Notice it's not configured on port 24 because show VLAN 10, or rather show VLAN 20, shows us that port 24 is untagged for VLAN 20. That port has been put into VLAN 20. But if we have a look at VLAN 10, notice it's tagged for port 1 and port 2 now, which is correct. So we have sorted out a potential issue that if the link goes down between the router and edge 1, that we wouldn't have had connectivity to PC2. But now we will because VLAN 10 is tagged on this link, tagged on this link, and tagged on this link. But what about PC3? If this link went down, would we be able to send traffic via this link and this link to get to PC3? And the answer would be no. On edge 1, typing the command show VLAN 20 shows me that VLAN 20 doesn't exist. No ports are in VLAN 20. So if this link went down or this trunk went down, there would be no connectivity to PC3 from other parts of the network even if this link was up and spanning to it unblocked this port. So what we need to do now is we need to allow VLAN 20 across this link as well as this link. So let's start with the router. On the router, show VLAN 20 shows me that it's only been enabled for TRK2. So VLAN 20 tagged TRK1. That will allow VLAN 20 from the router to edge 1. So now typing show VLAN 20, you can see that it's tagged for both TRK1 and TRK2. So I'll save the config. Let's have a look at edge 1. So on edge 1, create VLAN 20. We are going to tag this on TRK1. And we're going to tag VLAN 20 on port 23. So now typing show VLAN 20 shows me that it's tagged for port 23 and TRK1. So I'll save the config. What about edge 3? So show VLAN 20. You can see it's tagged on port 1, untagged on port 24. So what we need to do now is type the command VLAN 20 tagged port 2. So now if we type the command show VLAN 20, you can see that the VLAN is tagged on port 1, tagged on port 2, and untagged on port 24. So that's correct. So I'll save the config. So basically what we've done is we've allowed VLAN 1, 10, and 20 across this link between edge 1 and edge 3. Once again, on edge 3, we type the command show VLAN port 2. You can see VLAN 1, 10, and 20 have been configured on port 2. And by the same token, on edge 1, show VLAN port 23. You can see VLAN 1, 10, and 20 have been configured on that port. Now on purpose, I'm not going to allow VLAN 10 across this trunk between the router and edge 2 to demonstrate an issue that you'll encounter. So let's continue and see what happens. Let's set up a continuous ping once again between 
our local PC and PC2. And by the same token, let's set up a continuous ping between our PC and PC3. So on our local PC, ping 10, 0, 10, 250. Ping succeed. Ping 10, 0, 20, 251. And let's put a T at the end, so a continuous ping to PC3. So we've got our continuous pings running. Let's connect to edge 1 and shut TRK1 down. So on edge 1, show interface brief. You can see that TRK1 is up on port 1 and 3. And port 23 is also up as well as port 24. So I'm going to go on to interface 1. And I'd just like you to see those pings when I make these changes. So there are the two continuous pings. I'm going to disable this interface. And notice nothing happens because this is part of a trunk. By disabling one of the interfaces on in the trunk, there is no effect because the trunk makes all the protocols believe that the link is still up and that there's no problem. So notice everything continues as normal. However, notice now what happens when I disable port 3. I can still tell net. Notice we are losing pings on this side, but nothing has changed with regards to the pings going to PC3. We are losing pings to PC2. Now we're still telnetting to edge 1. So let's see if we made a mistake somewhere. So show VLAN 10. It's tagged on port 23, untagged on port 24, tagged on trunk 1, which is now down. Let's look at edge 3. So show VLAN 10. Port 1 and port 2 are tagged. What about edge 2? So on edge 2, show VLAN 10. And I'm hoping that you can see the problem. The issue here is that we didn't configure the trunk with VLAN 10. Notice VLAN 10 is tagged on port 2, but not on TRK1. So conf t, VLAN 10. Let me show you the ping when I make that change. Tagged TRK1. So type show VLAN 10. You can see it's tagged on port 2 and tagged on TRK1. So these two interfaces have been configured to support VLAN 10. What about on our router? So on the router, show VLAN 10. Notice once again, I did not allow VLAN 10 across this link. I didn't configure it on the router, and I didn't configure it on edge 2. So on the router, go on to VLAN 10, tagged TRK2. Let's see if that makes a difference. And as soon as I did that, you'll notice the pings start succeeding. Now, I wanted you to see the issue. If you don't allow the VLAN across all of the links, in other words, across all of these links, traffic is denied. I needed to allow VLAN 10 across this trunk, this link, as well as this link. So now notice the pings are succeeding. What happens when I re-enable this link? Will there be any change?
So on edge one, show interface brief. You can see that TRK1 is down on port 1 and port 3. So interface port 1, enable. Interface 3, enable. You can see that we lost a ping over here as spanning tree converged. There was no difference on this side. To prove that, if we type show spanning tree, you can see once again that port 23 is blocking. TRK1 is forwarding. So spanning tree converged when this link came up. Spanning tree started forwarding on this link once again and blocked this link. So let's do the test again. On edge one, I'm going to disable the interfaces. So interface one, disable. No difference in pings at all. The pings are succeeding. There's no issue. Interface three, disable. Notice no pings were lost. If we type show spanning tree, notice port 23 is now forwarding. No pings were lost because multiple spanning tree is used. But remember by default, if we don't configure multiple spanning tree with different instances, it actually implements a version of rapid spanning tree. So there's rapid convergence. Just to prove that again, I will enable this port, port 3, enable port 1, notice there was a ping lost, and then ping started succeeding again, show spanning tree, you can see that TRK1 is forwarding, port 23 is blocking. I'll disable this interface once more, go on to interface 3, disable that, show spanning tree, TRK1 is disabled, notice port 23 is forwarding. So spanning tree is very rapid these days, in the old days it was really slow. So that was an example of how spanning tree works and some of the issues you may encounter if you forget to allow VLANs across ports in a HP switching environment. Now the recommendation from HP is to allow all VLANs across all ports, unlike Cisco which will tell you to only allow certain VLANs across certain ports. So from the beginning if you add a new link it makes sense in an HP environment to allow all VLANs across that port. If you add a new VLAN to the topology, make sure that you permit that VLAN across all ports in your topology, otherwise you may encounter an issue as I've demonstrated here.